All right, guys, second part of the Diac and the Triac lab. Now, I mentioned that this this lab was a little bit all over the place. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the voltage drop across an SCR now. But we're going to use the Diac to trigger on the SCR. So you can see here that we've got uh, the AC across the entire circuit here. AC coming from this, these two points right here. And then we're having the positive go into the Diac. The Diac is then going to fire on the SCR, and the SCR is going to allow that voltage to go down to the one kilo ohm load. So this is AC going into the circuit. This guy's a rectifier, so we'll only see one part of the waveform over here. And then it depends on where the Diac turns on the SCR to determine how much of that waveform is actually going to go to the load. So now that we've got this guy set up, then we're going to look at the waveform that goes across the SCR. So let's take a look at this bad boy. We've got the Diac here, right across the source. Now again, we're coming right from the AC source here. So we've got 24 volts between that point and this point. We've got voltage coming into the Diac. Remember that the Diac is like two Zener diodes back to back, so a voltage sensitive switch turning on our SCR. The symbol for the SCR, you can see right there, anode, cathode, and the gate. And that's going down to our one kilo ohm resistor. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the waveform across the SCR. So again, we've got, you can use one of these little jumpers here. Jam the scope lead in there if you don't have a partner. And then the alligator clip is going to the cathode of the SCR. Now remember that this is AC going in, but DC going to the load. So we're taking a look at the, the waveform for the SCR. And there's our sine wave coming in. So you can see the sine wave in the background. And then you can see that the, the voltage increases on the SCR. No problems focusing in, there we go. Okay, so the voltage is increasing. Then at this point right here, you can see that the SCR is turning on. The remainder of that voltage waveform is going to be seen across the load. And then here across the SCR, voltage increases and decreases in the opposite polarity, but it's blocked. And it increases, fires on again at the exact same point. This remainder of the waveform will be seen across the load. And then again, it turns off right here. So the SCR is going to latch on, stay on, and then turn off when we get to about zero current. Then the waveform increases in voltage in the opposite direction, which is blocked because it's a switchable diode. Then we have the voltage increase and the SCR turns on once again. Okay, the settings that I'm on right here are, uh, I'm on two volts per division. I'm on 50 milliseconds. And I'm on the times 10 on the scope probe. Now this is kind of cool. If you flip this to uh, 20 milliseconds, then you can take a look and you can see the waveform a little bit closer now on the SCR. So you can see that the voltage is increasing, the SCR turns on. This part of the waveform we should see across the load and it completely blocks this portion of the AC going through. I chose to stay on uh, this setting here so I could see a number of different sine waves coming through. So my diagram looks like this and I've superimposed the portion of the waveform that's going to go to the load. So everything that's in a solid line is what I'm seeing across the SCR. The dotted line is what I'm expecting to see across the load. And again, I'm on 50 milliseconds, 2 volts per division, and I'm on times 10 on the scope probe. Beauty. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the voltage across the load. So we saw what was developing across the switch. The switch, I'm just calling the SCR as a switch. Because it's switching on, conducting, staying on, and allowing that voltage to go towards the load. So, in order to take a look at that waveform now, we're now going to move our alligator clip down to here. And we're going to move our scope probe to the top of the resistor. We're looking at the 1 kilo ohm resistor here. I just lost my scope lead here, so give me two seconds to set that up, and then I'll show you the waveform that's on the screen here.
Yeah. So we said that the remainder of the voltage is going to go. This thing fell out again. Sorry. The remainder of the voltage is going to go across the load there. So now we can see that the SCR was blocking the negative portion of the waveform, and it was turning on near the peak of the positive waveform. So the remainder of the voltage is seen across the load. Okay, so drawing that out on my lab, I've superimposed the, the AC here, so the dotted lines are the AC, but what we're seeing here is these waveforms going to the load, right? Those are corresponding to uh, these guys right here. Okay, but again, we have that AC waveform that's going across the SCR. The SCR is firing on near the top of the positive waveform and allowing, so we can see here that the AC is, this is what we saw across the SCR. Then the SCR turned on, the remainder of the voltage goes towards the load. Then the SCR turned off. Voltage increases across the SCR in the opposite direction, but it blocks it. Increases to the, this point. The DIAC is now firing on the SCR right here, and the remainder of the voltage waveform we see across the load. And again, I'm on 50 milliseconds, 2 volts per division, and times 10. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the DIAC, but we're now going to use the DIAC as a trigger for the TRIAC. So exact same circuit as before, but we're taking out the SCR and we're replacing it with the TRIAC here. Okay, same load, same DIAC, and you can see that everything is the same on the circuit now. The only thing that's changed now is I've placed the triac in line with the load rather than the initial SCR. So now remember that this guy is like two SCRs back to back. The diac is going to fire it in the positive and the negative portion of the waveform. Looking at our scope leads, again our scope lead is here and then we have the alligator clip on the bottom. The waveform that we see across the triac now it looks like this. So very similar to what we saw with the SCR, but now we're seeing it with the pulse on in the positive and the pulse on in the negative portion of the waveform. Both of those are coming in at the exact same time. Okay, you can see here that it's increasing to the positive. The diac is firing it on. This portion of the waveform we'll see across the load. Then we can see here that the triac turns off. Sorry, I lost the scope lead. Hang on. Okay. So there's our, then in the negative portion of the waveform, the voltage is increasing across the diac. The diac then turns on the triac here and the remainder of the waveform we should be able to see across the load. Okay. I'm on the same settings here. So scrolling down, this is what I saw on the triac, 50 milliseconds, 2 volts per division, and times 10. And you can see that I've superimposed the AC waveform that's happening in the background. But we can see that the triac is turning on in both the negative and the positive portion of the waveform. So across the load, we should see this portion and this portion across the load. Okay, this is the waveform that we're seeing across the triac. All right, guys, last part. We're going to use the DIAC as a trigger for the TRIAC, but now we're going to use look at the voltage across the load here. So we saw that the TRIAC was turning on in both the positive and the negative portion of the waveform. What determined where it turned on was the DIAC. So it turned on at the exact same spot in both the positive and the negative portion of the waveform. And the remainder of the waveform is going to be seen across the load. So now we're looking at the resistor and... Remember that the, across the triac, the voltage is going to be increasing. The diac is going to fire on the triac, and the remainder of that voltage waveform goes across the load. Then it turns off. The voltage increases. The diac turns on the triac, and the remainder of this portion of the waveform goes towards the load. So this is what we're seeing across the load. And I've kept everything the same all the way through. 50 milliseconds, 2 volts per division, and times 10 on the scope rope. So again, we're looking at the exact same circuit. We have the diac firing on the triac. 
And now we're looking at the voltage across the one kilo ohm load. So this is our waveform on the scope. And you can see that the waveform is increasing, the diac is turning on the triac, and this is the remainder of voltage that's going towards the load. If we change the, the setting here, then you can see here that, the again, the voltage is increasing to this point, the diac turns on the triac, and the remainder of the voltage goes towards the load. Then it turns off, voltage increases, the diac reaches that potential to turn on the triac, triac fires on and stays on until we have minimal current and turns off. Then again, the voltage increases, the diac turns on the triac, and then we can see that we get the remainder of the voltage going towards the load. Okay, so last portion of the, of the lab, we're looking at this waveform here, and this is our wind, one kilo ohm load being fired on by the triac. So it's an awesome way. Now if we put in a variable resistor in with the, the DIAC, then we'll be able to have a full 180 degrees of control over this entire sine wave. So usually in your dimmers you'll find that there's a DIAC, and the DIAC turns on the triac and allows you to have full control over the positive and the negative waveform of the AC going towards your light bulbs in your house.